So for this dish, we are going to have just a little bit of sea salt. We have oregano. We have onions, which will actually come chopped up in your meal kit. We have red and green bell peppers. There is flat Italian parsley, green onions. There are stewed tomatoes, and of course the farro, and finally the pigeon peas. We're going to put a tablespoon of oil into your pan. And so what's the importance of, like, I see you put the oil in here. Whenever you're like preparing flavors for meals and dishes like that, what is it important to start with so that you can really bring out the flavor of the dish? So in this dish, we're actually going to start with our dried oregano. And as you've been the guest all day to the pan, I'm going to hand you over the magic spoon. And is there a reason why we're starting with oregano compared to like a garlic or why, why oregano in particular? Because we're going to infuse the oil. So am I putting a bunch of this in there? All You're going of this? to put it all in there. Okay. And how much is this again? This is going to be a tablespoon and a half. Okay. So you're going to go ahead and stir that up. Make the next sure. ingredient we're going to add is our onion. And this is just, once you start to smell it, we are now going to add the next ingredient. Which was the onion. Yeah, I can start to smell the flavors popping out already. We're coming behind you with our red pepper. Oh. We're coming behind that with our green peppers. And from this point, we're just going to stop for a second. We're going to make sure that you're monitoring your heat, which again is why I like to use natural gas. Because if this was an electric stove, you have to wait for the stove to cool down for the pan to cool down. When you have natural gas, it's an automatic thing. So we want our onions to cook until they look about a little translucent. And I think that we've actually hit that mark. What do you think? Uh, yeah, those look pretty translucent. Translucent meaning you can't, you can, you can see through them just a little bit. That's correct. And at this point, we want to add our garlic. And should we turn the heat back up or should we keep nope. it where it is? Okay. The worst thing in the world is burnt garlic. Mm. And so and that's why we added that as one of the last ingredients. Because if you add that garlic in too soon and it starts to burn, your entire dish becomes bitter. You know, and I, I used to actually always add garlic first because I like the smell of garlic and you want to bring out the flavor of the garlic first. So you're saying don't do that. Do this because when you do this, the garlic doesn't burn. Exactly. And, and it actually, coats all the vegetables. But you know what's not killing the dish is the oregano because we took the time to infuse the, the oregano into the oil, and now that's incorporated in all of the ingredients that are in this dish. You can barely smell the oregano. So the next thing we're gonna add is our farro. And how much farro is that? This is gonna be a cup of farro. And just stir that in as well? Yep, and so now we're gonna toast it off. So by toasting off your grain, it's just like toasting off a rice. It's gonna give you a nice nutty flavor. And how long is this going to, uh, do we continue to cook this? I guess we still have more ingredients that we're putting in here. Exactly. So each two, ingredient that you add, you're going to add about another two to three minutes to each dish just to pull out what you need to get out of it. Okay. Now you would think that the next thing we would add would be the peas, but we don't want to do that because it's such a soft and gentle ingredient. We're going to go ahead and add our tomato. That's what I would add next to get some more flavoring in there and at this point we can turn our heat back up to medium high heat and do the same thing just stir this in just go ahead and stir that on in mm -hmm. so we just want to bring this up to a nice small simmer which will take again another two to three minutes the next ingredient that we're going to go ahead and add is going to be our green onions or scallions that's correct same thing, cup and, what is that, a cup and um. That's about a cup and a half. Cup and a half. And if you don't like green onion, you're not a big green onion fan, it's okay to take some of those things out. You don't want to take everything out because you don't want to miss out on the flavor that's invited into this pot. It actually smells like a stew right now. It smells amazing. And then from this point, we're going to go ahead and add our pigeon peas. 
And how long were the pigeon peas cooked? These things are these come in the meal kit. They're are they cooked or are they dry when they come in the meal kit? No, when they come in the meal kit, they're already uh, par cooked so that we can help reduce your cooking time. Oh, that's great. So it's like when you receive the meal kits, you all you really have to do is just open the package and start cooking. Exactly. We'll go ahead and cut up any of your root vegetables because we don't want anyone struggling with trying to have to cut up a root vegetable. And then we also cut up the onions because we don't want people sitting around at the countertop crying for the next half an hour. So the last two ingredients that we have, your chicken stock. And now, where did this stock come from? Is this, uh, this something that we created, we boiled it? Uh, now at North Star ourselves? Food Hub, we make our own chicken stock. Okay. But if you didn't have your own chicken stock, you can always use a low sodium or no sodium chicken base. You always want to go low sodium because now at this point you control the amount of sodium that's going into your meal. And we have not added salt to this dish yet, correct? Not at all. All right. Everything is to taste. So salt would be one of the things that you'd finish this dish off. Now the stock, we're cooking it for another two to three minutes? Actually, we're gonna bring this up to a simmer. Okay. Then we're gonna place our chicken on top and this goes into the oven at 350 degrees for an additional 15 to 20 minutes. So about 15 minutes to get up to this point. If you have natural gas, your cooking time is actually reduced because you control the heat. If you're using an electric stove or a glass top stove, it does take a little bit more time for you to bring it up. So here we have the chicken that was seared off earlier. And we're we just gonna add that to this? We're gonna add that to the top where I've got a few other pieces in here as well. All right. And you wanna finish that off with the cilantro? Exactly. We'll finish this off with some cilantro. And you wanna leave a little bit in the bowl just so that when you're done cooking, just to give it that fresh pop of flavor, you can add that right and it makes right at the end and it makes a wonderful garnishment. We're going to go ahead and turn this off. You're going to pop your lid on top, get your oven mitts and let's head on over to the oven. All right. And that's going to set in there at 350 for 15 minutes. All, All right. right. So let's see how this looks. Oh, wow. Mm. That looks pretty good. It sure does. Yeah, I can't wait to taste that. Thank you again for following along. We hope that you learned something new from this video series, and we look forward to hearing how your arroz con pollo dish turned out. For more information about the BJC Food as Medicine program and our partnership with Spire, please visit the website below. Thank you.